Nuggets! This lesson is going to teach you how to add dialogue to your personal narratives. So in the lesson, we're going to focus on three things. First of all, you shouldn't just add dialogue whenever, so you'll learn when you should add dialogue. You'll also learn how to punctuate dialogue, and finally, how to do your paragraphing correctly. Let's get started. First, it's important to understand when you should add dialogue. Just because there was an entire conversation going on during most of your event doesn't mean that your readers actually care what people were saying. So, here are a few reasons when you should use it. You should use it, number one, when it can advance the plot. So if people are talking about something that is going to cause something else to happen, if you're trying to communicate what's going on, that's a good reason to add dialogue. Another good reason to add dialogue is if it's helpful to create a certain mood. So if you're trying to make your readers feel a certain way and you can do that through people talking, that's one good way to use dialogue. A third way, and I would say that this is the most important and best time to use dialogue, would be when you're trying to define characters. You can tell a lot about what people are like based on how they talk, based on what they say, based on how they deliver and pronounce uh, what it is that they're communicating. So number three is always a great technique. And always keep in mind that dialogue exists to show rather than tell things. So you provide the dialogue so that your readers can make inferences or draw their own conclusions. Don't ever use dialogue to talk at your reader. You always want them to feel like uh, they are the flies on the wall um, kind of spying on uh, the event as it happens. You want them to feel like they're there. Before we go any farther, we need to talk about what a tag is. So a tag is the clause that tells the reader who is speaking. So if you remember from phrases and clauses, a clause consists of two parts. Do you remember what they are? Yes. They have to have a subject and a predicate. So a tag is a clause. And most common tag is he said, she said. That's the most common one. Now, said is the most common, but it's not the only one out there. So the image on the right side of your screen, uh, these are a hundred different ways to say said. So these are a hundred different verbs that you can use instead of said. Now, that being said, ha ha ha, uh, sometimes you can do yourself a disservice if you get too fancy. Um, so only really change it when you need to change it. And keep in mind that most readers, when they read dialogue, uh, even though it's on the page and they process it, they don't really see it. Um, so keep that in mind. Now for the juicy stuff. How can you write dialogue? So you may be wondering why I have four skeletons at the top. Okay. Well, I could only find a picture of four, and I'm going to provide you with three basic sentence skeletons. When I say sentence skeletons, I mean this is a blueprint or a pattern that you can follow when you're creating your dialogue. These are structures that repeat over and over and over again that you can use whichever way you want. So the first one, you can have the sentence followed by the tag. So that looks something like this. Let's go, Jim said. So notice the sentence is here. It's in quotes. It's separated from the tag with a comma, never with a period, and the clause is at the end. Jim said, there's my tag. Notice my period doesn't come to the end. The reason why you have a comma here is because the sentence isn't technically over until you have your tag. The second sentence skeleton or structure that you can use is a tag that interrupts the sentence or the person's statement. So here's an example. Let's go, Jim said, before it rains. So in this case, the tag is sort of sandwiched in the middle of Jim's sentence. And we indicate that with a comma here and a comma after the tag. The reason why you have a comma here 
instead of the period that you have up here, is because the sentence isn't done yet and you want to indicate that Jim is going to finish his thought. So we have a comma here. Then we open quotes again and close quotes at the end when he's done. Now notice, before is not capitalized. That's because this is the middle of his sentence. Here's another example. Now this one, you'll notice, is punctuated a little bit differently. Let's go, Jim said. I don't want to get drenched. Notice the differences here. The first example, we had a comma after said, and that's because the thought is completed with the subordinate clause here at the end. Half the sentence is here, half the sentence is here. This right here in our second example, there's a period after this said because I have an independent clause here, but instead of a dependent clause that I had in the previous example, before it rains, in the second example, I have, I don't want to get drenched. That is an independent clause. I, what about me, don't want to get drenched. So because I have two independent clauses, I'll have a period here, and my second sentence will be capitalized. This will all be in the same paragraph. If you feel overwhelmed by the punctuation at this point, don't worry, we'll cover it later on in the lesson in more specific detail. The third sentence skeleton is a tag followed by a sentence. So this is the reverse of skeleton or method number one. So instead of saying, let's go, Jim said, we can flip that around, put the tag first, Jim said, let's go before it rains. Notice I still separate my tag clause from the statement that the character is making. So it follows the same rule, it's just a different order. Now, I felt okay putting my four skeletons there because I'll add a fourth just for good measure, and that's because you can, of course, have a sentence without a tag. Now, I, I'm not going to include this as a specific skeleton, but especially when dialogue has been going on for a while, you don't need the tag because it's going to be clear from your paragraphing. And so when you have an implied speaker, when the reader knows who it is without you saying who it is uh, with a tag, you can't have them like that. Now, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this, the nitty gritty. How do I punctuate it? Well, the first one is pretty Captain Obvious, and I'm sure most of you know this. You put quotation marks around direct quotes only. Direct quotes are a person's exact words. So here's an example. You need to pick me up after school, and the quotes are around only that part. There are no quotes around the tag because Jane's not saying it. Be careful with this though. A lot of students who are new to dialogue, they add in quotation marks when they don't need them all the time. You only use quotation marks when they are direct quotes, not indirect quotes. So look at this second example. Jane told me that I needed to pick her up after school. There aren't any quotes in this second sentence and there don't need to be because I'm not actually writing what Jane said. I am writing that Jane told me I needed to be picked up after school. I'm not saying that Jane is actually speaking in the second sentence, so it's not a direct quote and there are no quotation marks. So be careful with that one. Second rule, always capitalize the beginning of direct quotes unless the tag interrupts the sentence. So this is just like a normal sentence rule, okay? So even if people are speaking in fragments in your dialogue, you'll still capitalize it. So Ms. Prez answered, comma, open quotes. I'm capitalizing the R in read the rest of the chapter, period, close quotes. So because even though this isn't the beginning of the actual sentence, the actual sentence starts here, her statement is starting here. So I'm going to capitalize to indicate that. Now here's another example, and this shows you the interrupter structure where the tag is in the middle of the sentence and half the sentence is on one side of the tag and the other half is on the other side of the tag. So this one says, I wish, Jamie said, that we went to the same school. So you notice you capitalize the beginning of the sentence or the statement like usual. 
And then the second half, the part that completes the statement, here it's a dependent clause, which is usually the way these divisions work out, is an independent clause followed by a dependent clause, or vice versa. So notice it's not capitalized, and that's because the sentence that she's saying actually started here. Next rule. Now, this is something you want to commit to memory. Once you have your quotation marks and you've capitalized, you always want to separate what the character is saying from the tag with punctuation. But you're never going to separate it with a period. Instead of a period, you're going to use a comma. Now, let's say you're asking a question, then you just use a question mark. If you're shouting or someone is screaming, an exclamation mark. But you will not, not, not use a period. Let's look at some examples. So here's one. Janice, come here right now, bellowed Mr. Jeeves. So he's bellowing. He's hollering at her. So I have a, an exclamation mark at the end of his statement. I don't need to add a comma after it because an exclamation mark on its own, that'll be sufficient. Much the same way, question marks don't need a comma with them either. So it says, are you coming to the game, queried Joe. He's querying, he's asking a question. So I have my question mark, and it's inside the quotes. I don't need to add a comma here. Now, this is the one that you need to pay attention to. I just want to go to sleep, mumbled Jerry. Now, Jerry is mumbling. He's making a normal declarative statement. He's saying he wants to go to sleep. He's not screaming it. He's not asking a question. Normally, the end of a sentence, we would put a period. But of course, this is dialogue, and our sentence isn't over until we've had the, the tag included in most cases. So if I'm including the tag, I don't want to separate this, because then that would indicate that this on its own is a new sentence. And of course, that would make no sense. So instead of a period, we use a comma. And last but not least, always make sure that you place these punctuation marks inside of the quotation marks. Think of the punctuation as being lonely, like Woodstock here. And like Snoopy hugging Woodstock, the quotation marks will hug the punctuation and everything else in the sentence. Now that we've got punctuation out of the way, let's review how to paragraph dialogue. First, most of you are aware that you should start a new paragraph to indicate a new speaker. So every time the speaker changes, you should start a new paragraph. Keep in mind that after you've been doing this for a while, depending on the structure of your dialogue, and every narrative will be different, after a while, you do not necessarily need a tag if everyone already knows who's talking. So just keep that in mind. Also, and this is sort of a, a picky point related to punctuation, let's say you have a long-winded character. If the character is speaking for more than one paragraph, do not close your quotes until the person is done talking, even if that is in another paragraph. So you'll start every paragraph that the person is speaking with quotes, but you won't actually end the paragraph with quotes until the person decides to shut up. Here's some other tips. Dialogue is one of the few places where fragments are acceptable in your writing. And it's acceptable in some dialogue because often when people are communicating, uh, particularly in a quick exchange, they won't necessarily say the whole sentence, particularly if they're in a hurry. So you can get away with that, but just use it judiciously. Here's an example. If you wrote this in your paper, I would take off for it because this is a subordinate clause fragment. You have an I, you have a said, I said, but you have this subordinating conjunction here. The word because makes this an incomplete thought. However, if you are writing a dialogue where you are arguing with your mother, it's very likely that your mother might respond with a subordinate clause fragment. So it would be realistic to reflect the way that she sounds to write the dialogue as a fragment. So this would be perfectly acceptable. Quotations, capitalized, because I said so, exclamation mark, close quotes, my mom snapped, period. Another tip, don't get overly creative with your tags. And be especially careful not to confuse your 
actions with quotes. Okay, don't use verbs in your tag that aren't actually synonyms for talking. So here's an example uh, that a student wrote that was incorrect. I sure am tired. Jesse yawned. Now, lovelies, Jesse might be yawning as he or she or as she is saying this, but this is not a word that means speaking. It is an action. So the correct way to type this would be, I sure am tired, period, close quotes. Jesse yawned. And then maybe she says something else. This is not a tag because you are not saying uh, he said, she said. So be careful with that one. Here's another example. You look beautiful tonight, Dwight smiled. Now, Dwight might be smiling at her uh, or at him as he says this, but smiled, I mean, if I said she's smiling, that doesn't mean she's talking. So be very precise with your language. This is not a tag, and because it's not a tag, the second line, this is the way it should be correctly written. And your direct quote, there is no tag, and you just have description in a new sentence. Another common error, especially for new writers, is a lot of people tend to repeat themselves and they tend not to include new information in the dialogue. So that will bore your reader. Here's an example from a student essay. Johnson has been recovering from a pulled back muscle. And then the dialogue that follows it says, I pulled a back muscle, but I'm recovering, Johnson said. Um, don't include this if you have this in your dialogue. Or if you've already written this somewhere, don't include this in your dialogue. Um, personally, if I had to pick between one or the other, I would choose to insert it in the dialogue because then you're more showing people rather than telling. Because you're allowing the characters um, to tell what's going on. It's advancing your plot. And the most important tip that I can leave you with um, before I show you an example in action is really only include dialogue when you need it. One of the biggest problems I see in student writing and narratives is that they know dialogue is a requirement, so they go into overkill. Um, just think of the example with a teenage catastrophe. Remember, she only had three lines of dialogue, but it was very effective because she used it to show the awkwardness of the situation of her first kiss and their inexperience and their nervousness. So only include it when you need it. Always ask yourself why. And for that matter, you should do that for everything in your writing. Only include what you need. And finally, write your narrative first. Uh, there's a reason why I didn't give you this lesson before you started writing. And that's because it's often very difficult to write dialogue on your first pass and your first draft because generally you might not be sure what is most important to include or you might not be sure what you want to reveal about your characters at a certain moment in time. W if you write it first then you have the benefit of hindsight and you can go back in and be like hmm where would be the best place that I could add dialogue um, that would add something extra for my readers. So write it first, then add the dialogue. Okay, let's look at an example. So l let's read this paragraph, which is not punctuated at all. It's not in paragraphs. And it says, you don't have to answer that question. I'll answer that question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled to them. You want answers? I want the truth. You can handle the truth. Now, as written, this has lots of issues. So let's watch uh, a short, brief film clip it's just less than 20 seconds from the film that this dialogue is taken from. Tim. Colonel Jessup, did you order the code red? You don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Whew. Very brief snippet, but very intense. Uh, you don't exactly get any of that intensity or flavor when you look at this disaster. So, there are several things wrong here. First of all, we don't have any idea who is talking, so we'll need to fix that.
We don't know when or where they are talking. We don't even know how many people there are because there aren't any quotation marks. We don't know how the statements are being said or like whether people are angry or happy or sad. I mean, you can't even really tell that this is a conversation or whether someone is just rambling in their journal. So let's start to clean it up. First step to cleaning up dialogue and writing your dialogue. So this is going to review what you've learned in the lesson and through this example from A Few Good Men. So step one, use quotation marks to indicate words which are spoken by characters. Period. Not a question mark. Did you catch it? So you see I've added quotation marks here and here, here and here, and everywhere. So now it's clear that there are at least two speakers. But technically there could be more because I still don't know who's speaking. I still can't really tell when the speaker changes. So I need to also add paragraphs and that'll make it a little bit more clear. You cannot have two people speaking the same paragraph. So now that I've divided it up, I can see it a little bit more clearly. But again, even with just paragraphing, I still can't see if there are multiple people. For step three, I need to add some tags so that we know who is talking. So, I added said the judge, said Jessup, said Kathy, said Jessup, said Kathy, said Jessup. All right, now, I added tags, but there are a few punctuation errors here. Do you see them? Take a minute and look at it closely. Step four, fix the punctuation. If you caught that the period after them need to be changed to a comma, you are correct. And you also needed to change the period after truth. Now at this point, I still have some issues. I don't really know who the judge and Jessup are. And I have added tags so I can identify three speakers. But this is kind of boring, said the judge, said Jessup, said Kathy. I mean, you, you sound like a machine. So. Step five is go back and revise to add interesting details and improve your word choices. And this is where you can add some things um, to make your tags more precise. So this says, the judge turned swiftly toward the witness and declared, you don't have to answer that question. I'll answer that question, Jessup said coldly, fixing his eyes on Caffey. He asked the defense attorney, you want answers? I think I'm entitled to them, Caffey replied. Jessup asked again, more forcefully, as if scolding an errant recruit. You want answers? I want the truth, Caffey shouted, banging his fist on the council table in defiance of Jessup's intimidating presence. The court members sat in stunned silence. The colonel leaned forward, rising to his feet, and thundered, You can't handle the truth. Now you notice the text in blue, this was the original bare bones dialogue. Everything that is in black text these were descriptive details and action that were added to the dialogue. Notice we still started a new paragraph every single time the speaker changed, even if I had the description before the actual statements. So that's a great way to go back and revise and really add flavor to your dialogue. This slide highlighted in red I wanted to show you uh, how this person used stronger verbs instead of said. So by using a really specific word choice, the author is able to communicate how uh, the speakers are saying their words so that you get the emotional weight of what's going on in that dramatic scene. I mean, the judge isn't going to turn swiftly toward the witness and giggle. You don't have to answer that question. Okay, so declared asked, replied, asked again, shouted, thundered. I also want to show you, now this still says said, but in this case we've added an adverb. It's perfectly acceptable to add an adverb so long as you can't just use a stronger verb in its place. So the author couldn't think of a, a verb that would express coldness. Um, one didn't exist, so the person used the adverb. Okay. All right, uh, if you are still feeling a little weak on your punctuation, I definitely recommend that you practice punctuating your dialogue a little bit, um, or at least look over these and then see how close you are. And so there are seven statements here. 
you should write each one down and add um, capitalization. Um, you should add your punctuation and uh, fix the tags as necessary. So number one says, I told my mother I'd be home by 11 p.m. Number two, I'll get you my pretty scream the wicked witch. Number three, Sandra asked, do you know where the party is? Four, if you want to apologize, Huff D, call me later. Five, I didn't m mean it, stammered Jalili, who was doing her best to avoid eye contact. What day is it? I asked. Hump day, my nuggets exclaimed. Today has been a long day, sighed my father. Okay, lovelies, pause this, and when you're ready to check your answers, hit play. Let's check and see what you got. First of all, you should not have changed anything in number one. It's a trick question. Not really. Because if you'll remember from the very beginning of the lesson, only direct quotes get quotation marks. Uh, I am not saying anything. I am making a statement telling you what I told my mother. I am not actually, this is not dialogue. This is not a direct quote, and that's why there are no quotation marks. I told my mother. This is not a tag. Number two, I'll get you my pretty, screamed the Wicked Witch. Notice I put quotes around, I'll get you my pretty. I changed screamed to lowercase because the tag is not the beginning of the sentence. It's always going to be lowercase when it follows the statement. Make sure I have a period at the end. And I put an exclamation mark since the tag said screamed. And because I have an exclamation mark, I don't need a comma. Next one, Sandra asked, comma, because I want to separate the tag from the statement that follows. I open my quotes and close my quotes after the statement. I'll capitalize this since she's speaking. And this is her statement, beginning of her statement. So capitalize the D. And she's asking something, so I know instead of a period, I need a question mark. Notice, and double check your paper, question mark should be inside the quotes. Number four, the first thing that you should have done is put quotes around what D is saying. What is she huffing about? So um, we have quotes around if you want to apologize, close quotes. And then we open quotes again for call me later and close quotes. Notice, if is capitalized, it's the beginning of the sentence and her statement. After apologize, this is a statement, and it's also an incomplete statement, so I'm going to have a comma, not a period. Notice it's inside the quotes. My tag is going to be lowercase. After D, I'm going to have a comma instead of a period. Now, I know I need a comma instead of a period because if I look at her statement, if you want to apologize, that's an incomplete thought. The thought isn't completed until the other side of the tag. So to indicate that I'm continuing the statement, I use a comma. And because I am continuing, the C and call should be lowercase. And my period should be in the quotes. Number five. Again, add quotes only around what Jalili is saying. So put quotes around, I didn't mean it. Okay? She's stammering a statement. Um, she's nervous. Um, it doesn't say that she's screaming or hollering, and she's definitely not asking a question. So if I were just writing this sentence, I would end it in a period. But because this is in dialogue, I don't want to separate this sentence from the tag that goes with it, stammered Jalili. So instead of a period, I will put a comma. Notice it's inside the quotes. Number six, put quotes around what's being spoken. The direct quote, so quotes, what day is it, close quotes. Because I'm asking a question, I'm not going to put a comma here. I'm going to put a question mark. Notice the question mark is being hugged by the quotes. It's inside them. And notice the sentence ends after the tag, and so there's a period. Then I need to add quotes around what my nuggets are saying. I also need to start a new paragraph here because... Somebody else is speaking. So remember, new paragraph every time there's a new speaker. Did you catch that? Good job. So my nuggets are exclaiming. So I put an exclamation point, close quotes. I don't capitalize the tag, and I have a period at the end. And the last example in your practice. Today has been a long day. That's what he said. So I put quotes around it here and close them here. 
and he's just making a declarative statement. So normally, today has been a long day. Normally, that's a complete sentence. I would just put a period there. But this is dialogue, and I still have my tag that is part of the sentence. So I am going to put a comma here inside my quotations. So those quotations are hugging the entire statement and the punctuation. And bam, that's it, Nuggets. You are now officially experts on dialogue. Ha ha ha. Well, you might not be feeling that confident, but give it your best shot. And remember, writing is all about going back and polishing, polishing, polishing. So it's okay if you don't get it perfect on the first attempt. We will polish it till it shines in the next draft. Good luck.